Hey everybody, Donna with Photonic Health. And in this episode of Health Made Simple, I am so excited. We are talking all about dogs today. Um, we'll probably touch on horses a little bit, but mainly dogs. And my special guest today is Nicole Rexing. Um, let me tell you a little bit about Nicole. She has got a lot of experience behind her. She's a registered vet technician. She's been in vet medicine since 1994. She graduated from Purdue University School of Veterinary Technology in 2000. She is a certified, she's also certified in behavior modification by Purdue University. She has been working in the holistic integrative vet medicine field since 2009. And in addition to uh, behavior modification, her specialty is um, nutrigenomics and cellular, cellular pathway activation with herbs. And um, in more of a layman's terms, that's taking a DNA, seeing which, um, what part of your genetics have been expressed and which haven't, and then utilizing herbs to um, work with your DNA versus just sort of like throwing different herbs at the wall and hoping they stick. In addition to that, she also uses ozone therapy, and of course, she incorporates uh, Photonic Health's red light therapy products. Um, so welcome, Nicole. I'm so excited to have you here today. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate you reaching out and giving me a, a, a chance to share a little bit about what I know and my experiences with um, yeah. all things natural and holistic. <laughs> yes. So we normally, I normally interview a lot of people and it's mainly horse related. And so we're so super excited to have a dog expert on today um, because of course we're all dog lovers here. And so um, I really want to delve into dogs because we've owned some pretty spectacular dogs. Um, and when I say spectacular, spectacularly smart. And they've made us up our game on training and um, behavior modification and things like that, but obviously not nearly to the level that you are at. And so um, I really want to dig into that topic today with you. Is that okay? okay. Yep, that sounds great. Awesome. Awesome. So um, I feel like looking at the world as a whole, especially the dog world, I think dog behavior is probably the most misunderstood thing. Am I wrong? I I, I think you're on there. Yeah, uh, we as um, humans want to put human labels on or in our in our mind we think they think like us and so we treat them as such but obviously if that were the case we wouldn't be doing this all the time right um correct so this is where um understanding behavior and how they think and how they tick because they don't think and tick like we do correct Correct. Exactly. So exactly. Like, so when you're talking to clients and things like that or new people, like what is, what is the thing that you find yourself talking about the most? I think a lot of the things, uh, people with, with that being said is they pets do things to make us mad or they're being spiteful. And that is not the case. Uh, dogs have stress and anxiety just like we do, but they exert it differently, and it's for different reasons. Um, dogs don't go, you know what? I'm so mad you left me at home by myself. I'm going to go in your bed and pee on it just to make you mad. Right. That, that is not the case. I always tell people they seek out items that smell like you because they're stressed and they're missing you, and they just happen to pee. Or uh, people right. who use their shoes around, they they go, they always pick my favorite shoes. Well, guess what? Your favorite shoes are probably the ones you wear the most. So they have the most scent. And dogs, when they release stress, they have to be destructive. 
So that is an outlet for the anxiety that's built up in them to release it being destructive. So I always tell people to get away, get that thought out of your head because once you, once you learn they're not being spiteful, that they're generally just upset, I think it makes your relationship with them so much better. And it actually makes you kind of feel bad that you put this out there that they're just being mean to you and they're just trying to get back at you when that is not the case. That they're just generally trying to deal with um, the anxiety. And you, you right. know, that's why we have to come in and give them outlets. We have we have to give them tools. We have to give them jobs because if not, they choose their own. And usually it's always the wrong answer. And there <laughs> causes more anxiety with you and them. So it's yes. just, it just compounds. So I help pet parents uh, view them differently and understand their behavior. And I think that's why I've had so much success with dog training is that I take time to talk to the owners and teach them behavior. I'm not one that goes, okay, when your dog does this, you do this. If your dog does that, you do this. It's it's more why. Because not not everything is black and white. Not everything is going to be just like in the books. It's going to be a little right. gray area there. And you have to know what to do and, and, and know why they did it. Why are they right. chewing on your parachute? Right. Why are they peeing in your bed? You know? <laughs> so Correct. You have Correct. to understand them at their level and then train them at their level and you again you train the dog in front of you you don't there's no dog that's in a set you know bookcase you know mostly it's correct and everything so that's yes. where i come from very cool very cool i love that we learned that um, in one of our rescues that we had gotten and then, you know, was doing the destructive chewing thing. And um, we had talked and talked to somebody and they said, well, when you like, they, they just want your smell, like just give Keep them something out. with your, yeah. yes, they give you something with your smell. And so once we were more cognizant of that and like when we, you know, would, leave and we would be purposeful in putting specific things there you know like brian's stinky dirty t-shirt and whatnot and it, it like you said it it changed the entire relationship like the dog just viewed you completely differently and it was a lot less stressful on us because we didn't come home to destruction <laughs> right and they, feel, also and they feel your stress so if you're yeah. If you're always stressed coming home because you're afraid you're going to find something, then they right. become stressed about that, yeah. that interaction. So it, it's a lot of people don't understand that you're, they read your body language better than you do with other people. And then every time you're stressed, they feel your stress. It's so right. uh, that's why I try to get people um, that are, um, to understand that. And then, of course, that's where food has also integrated its way in into that. I just had an epiphany one day thinking, you know, you know, kids with ADHD, right? ADD. Right. You're all not able to focus. Well, guess what? It's food related most of the time, yeah. right? Yeah. We learn which foods they should be on and which to avoid, uh, colors, like, right, dyes. And it just hit me. I'm like, well, dogs are the same way. You know, if you're giving exactly. your, your pets a bunch of junk that keep, makes them more wired to be anxious, then right. you know, it's not to say training won't help, but, you know, if, if we can get get them on a better diet and get some supplementation in there, that's going to bring them down a little bit to where they can focus. Because same with kids, if they're too up here, they yeah. can't listen. They can't learn because they're just too right. here. And you, of course, don't want down here either, right? So, you know, it's 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 where to find their focus. And then you c then they can learn and absorb versus just, again, throwing spaghetti at the wall and hoping something sticks. So it's just, right. kind of, you know, having that knowledge, too, to kind of bring that in together. I love that. I absolutely love that. We had a terrier and uh, due to... Uh, us not being able to provide him the proper jobs, um, we did have to rehome him. 
and he's with a wonderful lady. And um, we stay in contact. We still pet sit him and everything, but he is one of these dogs. He's a terrier. And she just reached out to me a couple of weeks ago and said, I don't know what's going on because all of a sudden he's becoming, you know, pretty aggressive towards my other dog and her other dog's a, a Mel Noir. So she's no joke when it comes to training, like her, like she knows what she's doing. And I said to her, I said, well, what food are you feeding? And it was sort of the opposite. You know, he, she wasn't feeding him the processed dyed stuff. She was feeding him the high octane, raw, souped up, mega energy. And I was like, he can't, he can't have that. He's already a fire dog, like from a Chinese medicine person. He's already a fire dog. And so now you're adding a hot, a warming meat on top of that. That's just like throwing gasoline right onto a fire. And, you, and, and this is what you're going to get. And so she ended up, she's really good. Like she just switched his diet immediately. And like within a couple of days, like, all of that settled right back down. Absolutely. So I love, I love the fact that um, we're having this conversation and that, you know, there needs to be an education and an awareness that if you feed your kid a Coca-Cola and he, you know, is bouncing off the walls, if you do the same thing with your dog, it's going to have the same impact. Absolutely. That, and that's where Chinese medicine comes in. Um, because I have been working with a TCVM vet for since 2009 and, you know, learning that certain proteins are hot, right? Like yeah. you said, you know, chicken, lamb are your number one and chickens just about in every dog food out there because it's correct. Cheap. But to know that again, not to say that it's making them bounce off the walls, but it's not, you know, it's again, putting a little more fuel on the fire. If we can get them on a cooling food to cool them down right. a little bit and also get them on some supplementation that helps with calming the brain and help them with the focus. So that's, that is so key because, because people, well, in traditional veterinary medicine, if you go to a traditional vet, you're not going to know that. And they're, and they're no. not going to tell you that either. I mean, cause they're oblivious. No. So that's where I, I love that that can, I can integrate that together and help, with that, I just had a dog uh, here for three and a half weeks of board and train. I normally don't, I always was kind of against board and train because I feel the owners need to train. I need to, I, I usually train the owners to train the dog. Okay. Yeah. I know I yep. can train the dog just fine. There's no problem with right. that. But these owners beg me. I literally har almost harassed me to, to do it. And I thought, you know, well, <laughs> I prayed about it and I put it on my heart. I'm like, you know, if they really want me to do it, I mean, you should do it. I mean, I, I was really doing a pushback going, you know, I really don't want to get into that. But then once right. I decided to take her because they were at wit's end, they were wanting a rehomer and they just couldn't handle her. So I was like, I'll take her. I just feel like I need to bring her and to see exactly what's going on in the situation. And I'm so glad I did. I'm so blessed by my experience with her. Um, found out, I, and this is why I love being an RBT, because when they, she came to me, a, a lot of red flags were going on about her behavior that weren't normal, especially housebreaking. She's six months old and she's peeing in her crate and not able to hold it and drinking a lot. And I'm like, in my gut, tells mm. me, I said, have you ever had a bladder, you know, have you ever had a urinalysis analysis done by your vet? And they're like, no, we, we, that's never been discussed. And I'm like, did your vet even ask you how housebreaking is going? That is number one thing my vet does. She asks, she goes, how's housebreaking? Because, you know, if it, things aren't going well, right. we need to address it, you know. Right. And right. That never got brought up. So anyway, um, she was here the third day and I was playing with her and she rolled over in her belly and I was scratching her belly and I saw she had an inverted vul vulva and I'm like, this is her bladder infection. She has an inverted vulva. Oh. I don't know what those are. It's where the extra skin kind of grows over their vulva and it traps a lot of bacteria. So usually these dogs have chronic, horrible bladder infections their whole life because 
all that debris and you know gets caught and goes right back yeah. into the bladder. And so I took a picture of it. And I sent the owner and I go, I found your problem. I mean, I'm not a veterinarian. I can't treat diagnose disease, but right. I feel this is one of her issues. So um, they asked me to take her to my vet that I work for, who's, who's integrative, holistic. And of course we got urine and she had a severe, I mean, there was so much bacteria in red blood cells. You couldn't even count. It was just the whole field was. Oh my gosh. And it, there was part of me going, thankfully we found this because this dog was miserable. Right. No, but I think it was yeah. her anxiety is that she couldn't get comfort. She was constantly Aww. looking and constantly being busy because she was so, you know, uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. So I got them on different food. You know, again, I'm not a big kibble person, but I meet people where they're at. So if that's yeah. what they want to do, I stay with that and get them on a better one. So we researched one, found one they could get on, on hand soon you know, with fish base, because we know fish is cooling. So yep. she loved it. Anyway, fast forward, she's doing amazing. Um, behavior wise has calmed down. The owners cannot believe how calm she is now. Um, and this is a healer, uh, English shepherd. Oh, <laughs> oh interesting. <laughs> right. right. So again, I taught him how to, you know, again, I and again, when I, I kept her, but I went to their home. So after I trained her, I went to their home and could see their setup and see where she was housed and where the, how they fed her and, you know, where she went to go potty. And so I was able to then help them make her, um, you know, just help them communicate with her and also sure. know and make suggestions. <laughs> you know, okay, yeah, this yeah. crate is great. Okay, feed her like this. I feed my dogs in the crate because food equals good. Um, so we, we just tweaked a lot of things and it, it's, it's made a, a, made a huge difference. So again, um, using all my education, I should say, you know, with the medical aspect, cause I think a lot of people don't understand sometimes, uh, behavioral is medical first, right. you gotta rule out Correct. the medical first before you can address the behavioral, like, um, uh, dogs that start getting, uh, storm phobias later in life or just noise phobias i mean you want to yeah. look at thyroid you know a lot of people don't yeah. think that thyroid really affects their their personality as well so there's just so many things that we can do to rule those out that can, can help then treat you know and help yeah. them get through those episodes of whatever get through those yeah. oh my god that's awesome i absolutely love it and it's yeah, and it's amazing because you know that's just one story that you have, but it's also one less dog that got. I mean, you saved her because she didn't have to go to a rescue. And I don't know about in your area, but I know in my area, my rep, the rescues are just overflowing. And the unfortunate thing is because. So many dog like because us as humans want to humanize our dogs and we unknowingly create behavioral issues within our dogs and I'm I'm just as guilty I'm just as guilty um, but I know it like I know it I know like I know my little thirteen pound Frenchie is a spoiled brat because I created that I own up to that. <laughs> um, well, that's the first part of, of recognizing the problem. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Correct. And for me, for right now, she's not a problem. So I'm okay. I'm okay, you know. Um, but that being but that being said, we've had so many rescue dogs that have come to us with such problems, and they're all they're all man-made. Like I don't want to say they're all man-made, but you know, they're like you said. It's either it's a health pro it's a health problem, nutrition problem, or it's a man-made problem. And the more that we provide an education and help people recognize this and give them the tools that they need, the more service that we're doing to the animal community. Because if we can keep even 
10 dogs out of a rescue that's 10 dogs that don't need to go through that level of anxiety and stress and miserableness I don't think that's a word but you know like it's it, it is it's just terrible it's terrible for them so um Nicole if people would like to get a hold of you first off do you do telephone consultations yes I I do zoom I do you know okay. zoom is not um available for them I do phone consults um okay perfect. I do just, you know, whatever they're comfortable with. Uh, I, yes, I, I do a lot. I have done a lot of phone consults lately, especially awesome. people that, were, that live local, that have friends that live hours away, you know. Correct. Four, one of them was four hours away. And I'm like, well, you know, that's really not feasible with my, everything else I got going on. It'd be different if I did that full time, but I have. Yeah. So many arms you're a, bus, you're a busy lady <laughs> you're a busy lady awesome so if people would like to reach out to you if they've got a situation or they'd like to have a consult what is the best way for them to contact you probably email or you know facebook if you want to facebook message me that that are the two probably easiest platforms just because i get so much spam calls it's it's ridiculous yeah correct, I, I, correct. if i don't recognize them i'm not if i'm like I don't know if you're like, if I don't recognize the number, yeah. don't I don't answer. <laughs> so what is your, what is your, what's the best email address to get a hold of you at? Um, it's, I'll say it first and I'll spell it, but it's K9 behavior RVT at Gmail. So it's K the number nine and then yep. behavior B E H A V I O R and then RVT. So R is in Victor T is in Tom at Gmail. Awesome. Nicole, thank you so much. This has been fabulous. Um, I hope that, well, I know that you're out there serving the world and making the world a better place for animals and dogs, especially. And so we're very grateful to you for that. So um, if you guys have any questions or you're curious about what Nicole does, um, even if it's a food related situation, please reach out to her. She's an amazing, amazing resource of information and, um, it will make a huge difference in your life and in your dog's life. So thank you so much for being on today. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching this edition of Photonic Health Presents Health Made Simple. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and ring the bell for notifications for all new Photonic Health videos.